Hello, my name is Carmel. Um, I'm Head of Education here at International House Dublin. I'm also um, a CELTA trainer. And uh, today I want to talk about, you know, the, the challenges, I guess, that the pandemic has, has posed in the school. And I'm sure it's the same for, for many of us. We, you know, initial reaction, there was a lot of anxiety and fear for both students and staff. Um, you know, none of us <laughs> had lived through a pandemic before. And, you know, knowing what it meant for ourselves and for our families, um, of course, first of all, was the, 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 the primary concern. And then thinking about how, how it could affect our school was, was obviously the next, the next big concern. And, and we weren't really quite sure how that would all play out. Um, another big challenge for us was the kind of, it, certainly in the first lockdown was the, the move to online tuition with very limited lead in time and resources. Um, we hadn't done fully live and interactive um, uh, lessons before, so it was it was a, a big a big change for us. And I know certainly we were we were feeling our way certainly in the first days and weeks, um, certainly of that first lockdown. So that was that was a big challenge initially. A big challenge has been it's been very difficult to plan or predict because the context has just changed constantly. Um, you know, we, as we, in the summer, it, it seemed, you know, that, that it was over, <laughs> that we were, that we were kind of going to go back to normality again. And, and as the summer progressed, we could see that the numbers were starting to increase and then restrictions were being introduced. And, and suddenly we, we found ourselves back, we found ourselves back now in the position where we were back in, in April and May. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been, you know, difficult to, to, to kind of plan in that context. I, I guess a, another problem has been communication, you know, especially when we haven't been in the same building, you know, there's so many issues that can be dealt with very simply with just a quick conversation outside of class, dropping into the teacher's room to talk to someone. And, and it, 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 it takes a little bit longer and it's a little more, bit more complicated um, when, we're, when we're not in the same building. And I guess just the, 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 the other thing to consider then is just the logistical and procedural and behavioral changes required due to COVID-19 procedures. So, you know, one-way systems in the building, increased physical distance in the classrooms, but also kind of trying to encourage people to, to be vigilant and to remember those, those um, behavioral changes because, uh, you know, it's, it's human nature that we all kind of go back to what we're used to. So they've been big challenges for us. Um, I guess in terms of how we've responded to those challenges, you know, a big thing is, I guess, being available and just talking, you know, talking to people, asking people how they are, having regular welfare meetings, lots of kind of feedback and advice for people. And I think that what's been very useful for us, I know, in the, in the education department is just using WhatsApp groups for spontaneous queries and feedback. We found that really useful, like when we're planning and also when we're teaching, you know, especially in the first lockdown, you're like, oh my God, how do you do that again? And quick message to the WhatsApp group and you've got a response immediately. So that, that was really reassuring and a great help in that first lockdown. Um, I mean, with the move to online tuition, you know, we, we, did we were able to develop kind of training and self-study tasks for teachers so teachers that kind of uh, gradually rejoined us and um, they we were able to do training with them and also give them tasks so they could practice so they could feel confident delivering their first lesson also kind of um paired teaching for the first lesson as well um we we've developed an online resource room which is great because a big anxiety for teachers is not having access to their favorite resources so we've got some really good online resources and that's made things a lot easier. And just, as I said, just staying connected and helping each other and, and, and being around um, to deal with questions and problems, I think has really helped. Uh, well, difficulty to plan in an ever-changing context. So we're just bas basically planning for multiple scenarios and, and being adaptive and being aware that those scenarios might change. So um, together with my colleagues in our registration and marketing departments, we're looking at, you know, what happens, you know, when, you know, in, in these various different scenarios and, and, and how to be ready for them, basically. And then the, the logistical behavioral changes required, required due to health and safety guidance. We, we did a lot of pre-return um, training for both students and staff. So, so we, we returned to the building in um, July 
and we had training for both students and staff um, so that they would be fully aware of what was required of them and also that they would have kind of a, like a manual kind of to take with them that they could refer to as well. Um, we've been able to kind of do dual delivery for isolating students as well. We've been giving students and teachers regular feedback and advice. So kind of saying that's great, like everyone's, you know, following the one-way system, that's fantastic, but we need to remember to be socially distant kind of as you come into the building and not just within the building. Um, and just kind of constant vigilance, being aware that, you know, as we said, it's, it's, it, it is likely that we do kind of fall back to old habits and, and just being careful with it. Um, feedback from staff and students has been mixed. <laughs> Um, both positive and negative. There certainly has been positives about it. Um, so as, as teachers, I think we always enjoy finding new resources, new materials, new tasks that work really well in class. And that's been exciting. And um, learning how to use like the online platform, learning how to use it well, I think has been great. Like that kind of buzz that you get from trying something out, it works really well and you share it with your colleagues. That's been brilliant. Um, we've also really enjoyed being able to share materials and lesson plans with students before the lessons because then they can use it for their own revision after class. I think one of the kind of, I suppose, magical things about working online is that kind of personal cultural exchange you get when one student is in Brazil, one student is in South Korea. You're seeing the sunrise in Brazil, you're, you're waving goodnight to the person in South Korea and, and, and even things like pets dropping into the lesson, children dropping into the lesson brothers, sisters, housemates. That's made an experience of working online seem more intimate and human and has really helped kind of bond the groups, I think. Um, and also, yeah, the opportunity to work on fluency writing tasks. It's not something that we did very often in, in physical classrooms, but we're using the chat box a lot, like for, for tasks for students are asking and answering questions. And, and that's actually worked quite nicely. Um, in terms of negative, I mean, there is no substitute to being in a room with people and there's, it's a special experience and returning to the building while we were all quite anxious about it was actually really, I suppose, quite emotional really to, to have everyone back in the building. You can see I'm in an empty class now and the school is empty um, and, you know, there's no substitute for having the buzz of people around the building. So, you know, that, that's something that we miss. And for students, who planned their year abroad and didn't know that they'd be doing their year abroad in the year of a global pandemic. You know, they perhaps didn't come with laptops, you know, and they're working with iPhones and things like that. And, and that's been frustrating for them. You know, maybe they're living in accommodation where the internet connection is patchy. You know, I've had students who've had to go out of the corridor you know, to you know, hang out the window to, to get a good connection. So that's been difficult, you know, it, it's been a real difficulty for, for um, both students and for teachers at times as well. What else have we learned along the way? I, yeah, the need to be adaptable, positive and resilient. And <laughs> um, yeah, you just have to keep going, it's fine. You know, um, we, we're all still alive. <laughs> we're all still working well together and it's, uh, we're, you know, we're all enjoying kind of good lessons. Um, we've learned, as we said, how to use online tools, platforms to engage and to facilitate learning, engaging and interactive lessons. We've learned the value of staying connected and of meaningful online communities. And that's, I think, something that we felt as teachers, and I know the students really felt as well, that the, 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 the daily connection that we had was something that actually helped us all get through the first part of the lockdown. Um, also, I think, you know, the benefits of physical movement, you know, we, we've been working in online classes where you, you're sitting at a computer. So trying to integrate physical movement into that has been fun. And, and also bringing that into kind of physically distant in-person classes as well. But yeah, the need for constant vigilance, vigilance with COVID-19 procedures. And then I guess just to refocus on our core values and how they translate into an online environment. You know, we, we, we focus on student-centered lessons, we focus on meaningful communicative tasks and working in an online environment, it's still possible to, to, to really um, integrate those, those values into those lessons. I suppose the last thing is, how do we see the situation developing into the medium to long-term is a hard one. Um, 
we're all looking into our crystal balls at the moment and wishing that we could see what was going to happen. Anyone's guess is as good, but I think it seems to be periods of greater freedom followed by periods of greater restrictions. I, I you know, that's that's as much as we can see right now. Longer term, a vaccine back to normal. You know, that that's it. That's 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 the hope. You know, that's the hope, definitely. Um. So. Yeah. Yeah. If I could come in then and uh, uh, ask a few questions, kind of related to that. Um, the thing that um, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think that IH Dublin were one of the first schools to go back into the classroom. And we were back on the twenty seventh of of July. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Almost a month before, kind of people felt obliged to. Uh, you were already back there. Can you tell us something about the 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 thinking? there of going back as soon as possible and what kind of reaction you got to that? Well, we, I mean, students were constantly asking us like, when, you know, when is the school reopening again? When is the school reopening again? Um, we were lucky, we're very lucky that we have some classrooms that are really big because we share our premises with independent colleges. So we have rooms that have, you know, capacity for, in normal times, capacity to, for 50, 60 people. So we felt we could really make use of those rooms. Obviously, independent college, they weren't, they weren't in session in the summer. So that was, we felt like we have this, we have this space, you know, we can have really, really, you know, good kind of physically distant classes and make use of the building, you know, and get people back in here. So the, the reaction was actually really positive. Everyone was delighted to be back and, um, you know, we, 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 of course, we were all nervous about it. You know, we, everything has been an unknown quantity. Um, but with the train, the training, I think, really helped. Um, you know, students knew what they were doing. They, they knew where they were going. They knew to follow the one way system. We had everything set up for them. It was, it was, it was good. Yeah, it was good. And then the last question I have uh, in kind of related to this kind of uh, how does the future look? What do you think? You're going to take with you from this uh, experience into the future what do you think might go back to the way it was and do you expect completely new things to come up as you look forward well i mean i think you know what we've learned from working online has been great and i i think it's something that we should carry with us into the future um i think you know there are there are benefits to working um in, in a Zoom class that you can bring into a face-to-face -face class. Um, so, you know, students working on um, tasks together in breakout rooms, you could have students working in different parts of the building, working together on a task. You could be interviewing students in different classrooms. I think that that's something that we could definitely work with. Um, and something, you know, there's, you know, different online tools that we've, that we've enjoyed becoming familiar with that I think would be useful in any kind of context. Um, what was the next question? Sorry. It was, um, what do we take, take with us? Uh, what might go back to the mm. way it was and what uh, new... What might go back to the way it was if, if we go back to normal? If, if everything goes back to normal? I guess, hmm, well, we will... Hmm, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say. I think, I think you know, we will be able to do the kind of the activities for students mingle around and, you know, the, the, the running dictations and those kind of activities without any kind of stress, you know, um, the, 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 the physical social distance has been, you know, it's something that we kind of have to be careful with and in in the, at the moment that we have to be careful with. So not having to kind of think about that, I think will be a relief for everyone. Um, yeah, the, the, Even just taking students out of the building for excursion lessons and kind of making use of the city, I think, will be something that we'll be able to do kind of again with, with any kind of anxiety about it, you know. Yeah, I think that's the thing that I, I'd look forward to as well, to, to be able to run those activities that involve movement. I think that's a very interesting point that you said, that movement in the classroom is something that adds adds a lot and then having mm. to fix that makes it makes it makes it quite difficult it, it does definitely um and especially when the lessons are like an hour and a half or two hours long you know you you visit you physically need to move in that time you know and, and then just to kind of wrap it up uh, i think maintaining motivation is, is a big challenge when there isn't really a clear end or a back to normal in sight and 
you, you like what you say about constant vigilance is very important. Um, how, how, how do you maintain that student and, 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 and teacher motivation? trying to keep trying to keep things fun you know trying to do like different tasks so we you know we with students um doing kind of presentations um on their favorite pop stars and sharing that with other with other groups um we have you know social activities where you know that they they're not just mingling with the students in their class they're meeting other students as well trying to bring the group together trying to bring the whole group together as a group rather than just each individual class um trying to kind of, i think it's 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 been important to to kind of have that 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 sense of moment of that sense of kind of community i guess as a whole school you know that you know that we're, we're all we're all in this together i know it's a cliche phrase but um you know we're in it together we're here to help each other but also we can gain a lot from each other as well 